Good day, everyone. Good day. Um, it's morning. Actually, it's afternoon. It's afternoon here in New York. It could be morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining this Black Alliance for Peace webinar, which introduces the International Month of Action Against AFRICOM, the U.S. Africa Command. Uh, we have a great roster of speakers, uh, an international group who will speak to this year's theme from Niger to Haiti to Cop City, defeat the war against African people. Uh, before I go on, you will notice we have interpretation and we have uh, instructions or have been given and will be given in the chat. Uh, please look at the bottom of your screen and choose your language, French, English, or Creole. And everyone, please do that now and you'll be able to follow with no problem. Thanks. Uh, but now back to our program. This is our fourth International Month of Action, and we will have an introduction from Yolian Ogbu. Yolian Ogbu is an Eritrean organizer and student based in New York City. And she serves as the Black Alliance for Peace, U.S. Out of Africa Network Coordinator. Thank you, Yolian. Thank you, Margaret, for that introduction. And thank you all for hopping on and spending time today um, on this Sunday to discuss and, and listen and hear about what's going on across the world because what we know and why I think all everyone is here today is because it's very clear that a war is being waged against African people all across the continent and the diaspora. We are launching this international month of action against AFRICOM but quite honestly just against the militarization and terrorizing of African people as African people are continuing to resist 
So we're going to hear from several amazing speakers, whether that's folks here at home kind of facing the terrorization and militarization, increased militari militarization um, of African people, from folks in Haiti actually also resisting um, militarization, resisting intervention from folks representing the Black misleadership class, as well as folks all across the Sahel, what is happening in Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali. I think it's really important that you are all here today to better contextualize what's going on and why all of these conflicts and crises really are interconnected and interdependent and what we can all do about it whether it's the climate crisis or many other forms of conflict and um, political movements happening in, in response to it. So thank you all for hopping on today and spending some time um, learning more about what it is that is going on across the world as an African, but also to know how you can continue to get involved. Uh, this is a very, very important month of action. So I hope everyone tunes in also to make sure that you continue to follow BAP and uh, take part in some of the actions going on the rest of this month. So I will take it back to Margaret. And thank you, uh, thank you so much, Yolian. And um, I see that uh, folks are already doing this, so please go to the chat, tell us uh, where you are, uh, and say hello to, uh, to uh, the many people who have joined us today. Um, and uh, we will have a question and answer session. Please put your questions uh, in Q&A, not in the chat. Please put them in Q&A. And so that can be orderly once uh, we begin after all our panelists have spoken. And a reminder to keep uh, our panelists and hosts to keep uh, cameras off and to be muted uh, unless you're speaking. So let's begin with our very first speaker. Uh, Fatu Balora is a member of the Thomas Sankara Center for African Liberation and Unity in Burkina Faso. She's also a member of the All African People's Revolutionary Party, the AAPRP. Thank you so much, Fatu. Please go ahead. Okay, bonsoir à tous et merci pour cette occasion qui nous est donnée de, de partager un peu ce qui se vit ici au Burkina et au Sahel en, en, en général. Voilà, ça va nous, ça va nous permettre d'apporter ce que, en fait, la version qui se vit, que non, nous, on vit ici. Voilà, contrairement à la version qui est un peu propagandée par l'impérialiste les, 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 et tout ça. Donc, euh, c'est vraiment euh, honorable. Merci beaucoup. Euh, sans plus tarder... Euh, Je vais un peu aborder l'histoire, euh, euh, comment on appelle ça, de ces, de, de ces coups d'État, euh, de ces, de ces euh, dernières années au, dans le Sahel, surtout particulièrement au Burkina, parce que euh, il faut, avant de parler de, de est-ce que la, ces coups d'État sont bénéfiques pour euh, l'évolution euh, du Sahel et de l'Afrique en général, il faut d'abord connaître euh, le contexte, voilà, le contexte de ces coups d'État et tout ça. Donc, euh, je vais parler d'abord du Burkina Faso. Vous savez, le Burkina Faso est un pays qui a, qui a je dirais, euh, qui a été pendant 27 ans, 27 ans sous une dictature euh, masquée en démocratie avec le règne de, du président Blaise Compaoré, 27 ans de règne. Euh, euh, disons, euh, on peut clairement et aisément le dire, euh, Laisse comparer le régime et comparer, c'était un régime, on peut le dire, euh, à, disons, euh, de valets locaux, comme on a l'habitude de le dire. Donc, euh, 27 ans de, 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 de dictature, 27 ans de règne oppressif. Euh, et la, la, la population du Kinabé a en 2014 a décidé de prendre son, son destin à main, d'où le soulèvement populaire qui a chercher le, le, le président de Sublès qu'on parlait du pouvoir. Et après ça, après ce soulèvement, et on a mis en place une transition euh, dirigée par, euh, comment on appelle ça, par des civils. 
voilà, par les civils, mais cette transition s'est vue, euh, disons, interrompue par une tentative de coup d'État du, du général du, Gilbert Guendiéré, bras droit du président Blaise Compaoré. Et euh, la population s'est une fois euh, levée pour dire non, on n'est pas d'accord, euh, on ne veut pas, on ne veut pas de ce coup d'État. Et voilà, ils sont sortis dans la, dans la rue et ils ont bloqué le coup d'État et ce n'est pas passé. Du coup, euh, on est revenu à la transition et on a fait des élections en 2015 qui a conduit au pouvoir, euh, 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 comment on appelle ça, le président Roque Matissian Kabore, voilà, qui a fait ses cinq ans de mandat et qui a été encore reconduit durant les cinq ans de, de, pour cinq autres années. Maintenant, il faut dire que tout au long de, après cette tentative de, de, de coup d'État pour réinstaller les... les, les les valets locaux de l'impérialisme de et qui n'a pas, pas fonctionné, je, il faut dire que l'impérialisme a trouvé d'autres moyens de, de, de déstabiliser notre pays euh, à travers le terrorisme parce qu'on a subi notre première attaque en 2016, voilà, en 2016 et jusqu'à là, de 2016 jusqu'à 2023, on a, on a, on a subi des, des flots d'attaques de, 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 terroristes d'attaque terroriste. Du coup, euh, avec le règne de, 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 de Rock, euh, la situation sécuritaire s'envenimait et il n'y avait pas vraiment de solution proposée pour et, changer la situation. Et bon, l'armée qui est la plus touchée par cette crise, parce qu'il faut le reconnaître, les premières victimes, c'est l'armée, donc euh, qui est un peu, euh, disons, qui ont dans, sur le terrain, les gars qui sont sur le terrain, qui comprennent un peu la réalité du terrain et qui, 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 qui donnent, il faut le reconnaître, ils le disent, ils donnent des directives aux politiques pour qu'ils prennent des décisions, pour, pour qu'ils prennent des, des, des initiatives qui vont vraiment à, les faire avancer dans cette crise, mais ça ne passe pas. Du coup, euh, en 2000, euh, je dirais en 2020, euh, en 2022, en 2022, on a eu un coup d'État du MPSR, le mouvement MPSR, qui a porté au pouvoir le, le lieutenant-colonel Damiba, avec des directives, voilà, des directives, une feuille de route, et une fois au pouvoir, le président, le pré, je dirais, le lieutenant-colonel Damiba a s'est détourné de cette, de cette directive, de cette directive, et à, je, euh, comment dirais-je, et, à, à, et ça a poussé, du coup, ça a poussé le MPSR, c'est le même mouvement qui a mené le, le qui a porté le, le, le colonel Damiba au pouvoir, qui a, c'est le même mouvement qui a renversé le colonel pour remettre en place le, le capitaine Ibrahim Traoré. Et jusqu'à là, on est avec, euh, euh, comment on appelle ça, le pouvoir d'Ibrahim Traoré. Donc, ce qu'il faut noter dans cette situation, c'est que, contrairement à ce que, que l'opinion pense, l'opinion internationale pense, en fait, ce coup d'État, ces, ces prises de pouvoir ont été saluées par la population burkinabé, par la population burkinabé en, en particulier, et par la population sahélienne en, en, en général, parce que euh, c'est d'une façon c'est comme si c'était des, des, des voies, des solutions proposées pour sortir de cette crise qui, qui fatigue trop la population. Voilà, si on va passer, si la population, se, je peux dire, la population se fiche complètement de comment est-ce que telle personne vient au pouvoir du moment que cette personne règle les problèmes de la population. Du coup, que ce soit par coup d'État ou par élection, si la personne idéale qui, qui, qui va vraiment euh, se mettre dans la peau de la population, régler les, les problèmes de la population, et si, même si elle vient par, je ne sais pas, on peut dire par un tsunami, ça, ce n'est pas un problème. Il faut simplement qu'il soit là et qu'il réponde aux attentes de la population. Du coup, euh, actuellement, il faut dire que... Euh, la population le, du Burkina, comme la population du Niger et comme la population du Mali, sont derrière leurs dirigeants actuels pour, parce que ces dirigeants actuels répondent aux attentes de, de, de la population. Voilà, du coup, euh, depuis quelques, quelques années, on, a, on assiste à, à, 
à ce, ce, ce sentiment d'anti, de, de, euh, comme les gens le disent, anti-français, sentiment anti-français, sentiment anti-américain, euh, euh, sentiment anti-européen euh, et tout ça. Non, mais en fait, il faut clarifier que les gens, la population n'a pas une haine française, n'a pas une, un sentiment anti-français ou anti-européen ou anti-américain. La population plutôt a une haine ou bien un sentiment anti-politique française, anti-politique européenne, anti-politique américaine. Voilà, en bref, anti-politique impérialiste. Du coup, euh, comme on le dit, euh, la, le coup d'État... Ici, c'est salué et, bon, pas les coups d'État en général, parce qu'on a vu que la population s'est levée contre le coup d'État en 2014 du, du, du général. Mais il faut reconnaître que ces, ces, ces derniers coups d'État, euh, la population a salué parce que ces dirigeants euh, rentrent dans, 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 dans les codes de je dirais, de, de la population, répondre aux attentes de la population. et et tout, et tout. Euh, pour souligner, euh, concernant le, le, la question de l'armée française et la, la question de l'armée américaine, et la, en tout cas la question de, de l'armée étrangère sur, sur le territoire, sur le, sur le, Sahel, le territoire sahélien, euh, c'est illogique, voilà, on peut le dire, c'est illogique, et c'est illégitime qu'un pays soit là et que, en fait, il soit, il, il, un pays installe sa base militaire dans un autre pays. À, avec euh, tout ce qui va avec, on peut dire que, que c'est illégitime. Du coup, il, il, avec le, avec l'option, avec, euh, je dirais, comment... Euh, avec la question, la question, leur, leur, leur justification de, 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 de nous aider dans la lutte contre euh, le terrorisme, euh, il faut reconnaître que ce n'est pas justifié. Ce n'est pas justifié parce que ce n'est pas normal. Ce n'est pas justifiable qu'au euh, Burkina, par exemple, il y ait une base militaire française et que jusqu'à là, euh, on n'a pas, euh, euh, comment on appelle ça on n'avance pas en matière de, 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 de lutte, en matière, on n'a pas de résultats, vraiment, on n'a pas de résultats. S'ils sont là, ils sont là avec leur atterrissage lourd, leur euh, formation et tout ça, mais on n'avance pas, on n'a on a pas de résultats sur le terrain. Et du coup, euh, aussi, on, on s'inquiète, on se demande, en fait, euh, comment, par exemple, ces terroristes sont, euh, disons, sont armés, sont... Euh, 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 sont armés, sont formés, vu que, par exemple, au Burkina, il n'y a pas d'usine de, 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 de fa fabrication d'armes, au Mali, il n'y a pas d'usine de, de fabrication d'armes, au Niger, il n'y a pas d'usine de, de fabrication d'armes. Alors, ces, ces terroristes, qui, 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 comment ils sont armés, comment ils arrivent à se, à se procurer de ces, ces, armes, ces armements lourds, comment ils sont formés en stratégie de guerre, parce qu'il faut le reconnaître, ce n'est pas juste des gens qui sortent et qui tirent au hasard, c'est des gens qui sont expérimentés en stratégie de guerre. Comment ces terroristes arrivent à, à, à avoir toutes ces expériences, toute cette formation et tout cet armement Donc, du coup, la population s'interroge, les, les dirigeants s'interrogent parce que c'est vu qu'on n'a pas vraiment une clarté, une clarté vraiment de, de la gestion, de la, de la présence de ces armées étrangères euh, sur notre territoire. Ça veut dire que leurs opérations sont secrètes et là-bas, leur base, est, bon, disons qu'ils ont des informations secrètes, euh, comment on appelle ça, un peu renfermées, et du coup, on ne sait pas comment ça fonctionne. Du coup, on les a dit, vous êtes, on a analysé, ce n'est pas une question de, de haine, ce n'est pas une question de truc, euh, on a analysé, ça ne nous arrange pas. Ils sont sur le terrain, ils sont venus pour nous soutenir, pour nous aider dans la guerre, comme ils le disent, mais leur présence sur, sur le terrain, ça ne nous arrange pas. Ça, ça, on ne voit pas de résultats. Du coup, on les a juste demandé de se retirer parce que nous, quand on sera seul, on va on sera vraiment euh, le, le, le nœud du problème. On sera so sorry, le Fatou. Du problème et Fatou on should be wrapping up. She should be wrapping up. Thank you.
she should yeah she can she can finish but just she should speak for just a short time longer i, I didn't mean for it to be so abrupt but she should be finishing ah, d'accord d'accord comme je l'ai dit on a, on a juste on, on les a juste demandé tout simplement de se retirer et de nous laisser gérer, gérer nos problèmes internes, de, de, de nous laisser gérer nos problèmes de façon euh, euh, interne et de façon réfléchie et tout. Euh, il faut reconnaître aussi que euh, le Mali et le Niger et le Burkina euh, sont actuellement en, en, en alliance euh, sur ce, ce, cette question de, de, de sécurité là, ils ont une alliance, ils ont signé une alliance euh, qui, qui, qui va les permettre d'affronter de, 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 euh, euh, cette question de crise en, 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 en tant qu'une euh, qu coalition, en tant qu'un début de, de, de fusion, et je, je peux le dire. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fatou. Uh... I will, oops, let me turn on my camera. Thank you so much, Fatou. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your remarks. You got us off to a great start. Uh, our next speaker is Karanja Gashusha. He's a Washington DC based Kenyan journalist working across Africa, Europe and the US covering African affairs. He pursued an MSc in New Media, Information and Society at the London School of Economics. And he has a BA in Sociology from Middlesex University in London. Karanja has previously worked as a filmmaker, Wall Street analyst, and now a political commentator focused on matters of African economic independence, politics, agriculture, and geopolitics. Thank you so much, Karanja. Thank, thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you, uh, fellow panelists and um, the audience. Thank you so much for having me. Um, as Margaret said, I'm Karanja Gashusha, and I'm delighted to be talking to you uh, today. I'm from Kenya. Um, I, I can't remember now if that was uh, part of the introduction. And um, as a Kenyan, I, I, I'm, I'm Kenyan and I'm also a Pan-Africanist, so I'm African and everything that happens in Africa and the African diaspora concerns me. Um, um, and, 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 and currently, the, we're, you know, talking about the African diaspora, of course, uh, everybody, I think, at this point across the world and all Pan-Africanists have become aware of the uh, so-called UN force, uh, Kenya uh, training police force um, that is meant to be sent to Haiti. And of course, it is hugely concerning because in my view, anything, first of all, coming from the UN, uh, I, I question, it is suspect because uh, the, 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 the UN and all those organizations, all those so-called multilateral organizations that were formed in at the height of colonialism in the 1940s, there's no way that you can tell me that the, same, the very same colonizers that were, uh, th that formed these organizations, the UN, the IMF, and all these so-called aid organizations and NGOs, there's no way that the colonizers could have formed these uh, organizations at the height of colonialism when they were torturing and killing us, and spe specifically in Kenya, where there was a brutal, brutal um, occupation that included concentration camps. Um, there's no way you can tell me that these same organizations are somehow now working for us. They were formed at the height of colonialism for the sole purpose of being the uh, PR arm of um, of imperialism. So there's nothing good that can come from them. They, they, they continue to function very effectively as the PR arm of imperialism. They continue to function in a way that it allows us into this uh, false sense of, co uh, of comfort that these organizations are somehow working multilaterally for the, for, for the whole planet. Um, the other thing that is of great concern is that when we see that this uh, agreement uh, supposedly between Kenya and Haiti 
I haven't seen a single Haitian diplomat or president or politician uh, even during the meetings uh, to seal this so-called deal. Who I, what I have seen is Secretary Blinken. I have seen um, uh, uh, Lloyd Austin, the, the Secretary of, of, of Defense in the United States. And so it's very, very difficult to understand what, um, how this can be something that is being re requested by the Haitian people or that can be of benefit to the Haitian people. So I, I will tell you what my view of this is, because this is something that imperialism has already been working on and, and has tried, and it is a tried, true tried and tested uh, additional method of um, divide and rule, divide and conquer. Because what we see is that uh, in the Congo, for example, where we had uh, Kenyan troops and other East African troops, as well as in Somalia, the result of that has been the uh, resentments raised in the populations that are essentially occupied by these forces. Um, AFRICOM uh, sends forces across African forces across the African continent, supposedly so-called, uh, to, to bring peace. And what we have seen is that the United States has become extremely, imperialism has become extremely adept at outsourcing everything uh, from slavery, which is what I believe uh, Western corporations are doing in Africa and in the African diaspora, to now um, occupation. They have learned that they can outsource occupation to Africans, to people that look like, um, like the occupied people. And of course, that is extremely destructive and, and damaging. And um, all it does is create uh, feelings of enmity and division uh, between us Black people. So it is directly contrary to Pan-Africanism. And Kenya has no business doing this. By the way, I forgot to uh, mention. I'm sorry, I heard some interruption. Uh, was that one minute? No, please go ahead. Uh, apologies. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I come at this as a member of um, Africa United, and 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 I should say that as a member of Africa United, um, it, it, which is an, a, a Pan African movement, which was formed specifically to fight these issues of imperialism um, a, a across not just the African continent, but the whole entire African diaspora. And so we are very focused on this. Africa United was, was formed as is a group of people that have come together relatively recently uh, when uh, the, um, after the military takeover that overthrew the illegal French system of government in uh, Niger uh, came about. And so we came together specifically to um, stand up and, 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 and say that there must be no war in Niger, to demand that there is no war in Niger, to demand the extraction of the French occupation force, as well as uh, the, the, the extraction of all foreign forces. By the way, what people are not aware of is that Italy, um, so don't fall for those uh, sort of um, uh, claims by Giorgio Meloni of Italy, that somehow Italy is better than France because Italy also has bases in Niger. Germany, uh, a country that isn't even allowed uh, technically to have an army, so has forces in Niger as well as other, there are so many other uh, European countries, including the Danes, people that you might not even think of, uh, you don't even think of as having armies. Um, that have bases in, in the Sahel, including the Danes, the, um, the Germans, and the Italians. What are they doing there? And so similarly, um, when we have this, uh, so, so our work extends to all anti-imperialism. And so we are very concerned about this occupation of so-called African police in um, Haiti, because what we know is that it is not an African-led uh, uh, operation. It is a US-led operation of divide, conquer, and as I saw in one of the comments, arson, because imperialism is very good at creating arson, creating divide and rule. Um, so Kenyan, um, uh, the Kenyan police force have absolutely no business to go into Haiti. 
this is the thing that I always ask myself. Did William Ruto, the president of Kenya, does anyone on this planet really truly believe that William Ruto woke up one day and said to himself, you know what, hmm, let's see what we could do uh, across the globe. The Kenyan police force are, cannot even handle the problems in Kenya. So we know that William Ruto did not wake up one day and decide that this was a good idea. We know that these are directions from Anthony Blinken, uh, from his boss, Joe Biden. Um, and, and the sole purpose of this is divide and conquer. It is not to solve Haiti's problem. When Haitians need their problems solved by the Pan-African family, Haitians will come to the Pan-African family. And at that point, I would be happy to see us, the Pan-African family, come together um, to, to, to help the Haitian people in whichever way that they would want the Pan-African family to, 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 to assist, to join um, in, in fighting imperialism. And so what I would want to say as a Kenyan, brother to brother, um, brother to my Haitian family, sisters and brothers across Haiti, do not uh, take this as a Kenyan, um, as it, it has no support in Kenya, by the way. Uh, and what I hope is that because they are now trying to uh, cloud it or, or dress it up in as, as a UN operation, it will be required to go through um, a UN, um, UN resolution, which I hope will be vetoed by those countries that have vetoes, uh, veto power. Um, thank you. I see that there's all, I only have about 30 seconds left, and um, there's so much I could say, but um, what, what I will say is that when, when Pan-Africanists come together to fight together in a united way, uh, we can defeat imperialism. Um, Kenya sending troops uh, or police at the behest of Anthony Blinken is not it. Um, and so what, what I would urge and call for all my African brothers and sisters to do is to support the revolution that is happening in Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, the Alliance of Sahelian States come together, support our brothers there, support the revolution, because when this revolution there succeeds, then the rest of the Pan-African world globally in Africa and in the African diaspora can actually uh, begin to build on that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Karanja. Uh, yes, this uh, uh, occupation of Haiti uh, sadly is being planned as uh, we speak just the latest occupation. And of course we have a panelist who will speak to that later. Um, we have, uh, and I did not mention uh, my affiliation with Black Agenda Report. I'm executive editor of blackagendareport.com and we know this issue is so important of Kenya in Haiti that we added an article uh, late in the week, blackagendareport.com, and you can see it there, which uh, uh, makes the case that Kenya is violating its own laws in uh, joining uh, uh, an occupation of Haiti. Thank you so much, Karanja. Um, our next speaker is Reverend Kiana Jones. Um, she is, and she's dressed for church. It's Sunday, of course. <laughs> Those of you who aren't heathens knew that already. But anyway, Reverend Kiana Jones is a, uh, I, I just want to say before I give my introduction of her, um, and I know she's going to speak to this, the repression that's going on in Atlanta, uh, where in uh, protest has been criminalized, people um, uh, facing, <clears throat> excuse me, facing very serious prosecution because they are um, using the rights we're told we have to speak freely and to as and assemble. Uh, Reverend Kiana Jones is a minister in Atlanta, Georgia, and an organizer with community movement builders with community movement builders and we have cop city in the title of our theme for a reason. So thank you so much, Reverend Jones. Absolutely. Uhuru family. So good to be here with you today. I did have to preach this morning. I came straight from church. 
to be with you today. And I'm so glad to be here. And it's really appropriate for me to still have my clergy drag on because many times when the U.S. seeks to imperialize and colonialism is spreading across the globe, they send people there who look like me with this very same collar to tell you that God said that this is his will for your people, that God said the U.S. is supposed to be here <laughs> to, uh, I don't know, make your life better. The U.S. is supposed to be here to civilize you and to make sure that you can have such better living conditions than what you already have because of course we know better than you do what you need for your people we see it going on right here in cop city you have heard about what's happening right now in burkina faso and the things that are happening from niger to haiti what we see is that u.s imperialism is in the u.s as well and the same way that they rely on the black misleadership class abroad. They rely on that same black misleadership class here in the United States, coupled with their lackeys in religion. You see a lot of preachers and particularly in Atlanta, Georgia, you see a lot of black preachers standing up telling you that Cop City is going to be good for you and your family, that we need to protect and stand by law enforcement. However, all that law enforcement has ever done here in the United States is oppress black people. What we see right now with the inception of Cop City, with the promotion of it by the black misleadership class, by the promotion of it by black preachers in Atlanta, is that the war against black people continues and we see it more clearly now as environmental racism. It's something that a lot of people have wanted to ignore for a long time. But when we think about it, even when the US goes abroad, the US is taking, exploiting, extracting natural resources from countries. The U.S. is destroying green space. The U.S. is destroying and making it impossible for people abroad to breathe freely. We are making it so that people grow up in adverse conditions and have medical problems. When we think about Cop City and we look at the destruction of 381 acres of forest land, we see that the war on Black people continues in that in an area where there is already a high concentration of people who have breathing and respiratory problems like asthma, you would exacerbate that by taking away trees, the very thing that we need to clean air and make it, uh, make it possible for us to breathe well. You would also seek to destroy a very vital watershed, despite the fact that you have already polluted it with lead, you seek to destroy this watershed, which is actually the home of the headwater of the largest body of water in the state of Georgia. The South River is vitally important to us and the South River going through that black neighborhood in Southeast Atlanta and South DeKalb County is the second most polluted body of water in the United States. That says something about how black people are treated and how they wage war against us whether it's in the US, whether it's in Haiti, whether it is in Burkina Faso, whether it's in Niger, wherever it is, we have decided, the US has decided that they will attack by any means necessary. So yes, environmental sanctions, along with those economic sanctions, they go hand in hand. What we see around the area of Cop City is that you have two schools that are there. They're trying to put it in a residential neighborhood, by the way, a neighborhood where I used to live with my family, where we woke up and went to bed to constant gunfire. And think about a firing range being that close to an elementary school and a high school. So you have black children who are there, who are constantly hearing gunfire, they are constantly met with police presence because they have police in schools. Their neighborhood is now over-policed. They are in a system of institutional education that causes them to be beholden to a system that criminalizes them from the time they step in the door. We are essentially terrorizing our children from the time they start school because there is nowhere else other than a school in this country where you have to be monitored constantly by police and you operate on a bell system. 
they are getting our children ready for jail, literally. They do it in such subtle ways, but we cannot continue to ignore these instances of patriarchal violence that are inflicted upon us from the time we leave the womb. From the time we are born as black people in this country, we experience patriarchal violence on so many levels. We experience it in the educational system, in the vocational system where we work, in religious institutions. Religious institutions are some of the biggest creators of harm when it comes down to the patriarchal violence that we experience as black people. Having a cop city where the militarization of police here in Atlanta and abroad would continue with trainings from the Georgia International Law Enforcement Exchange, better known as GILE here in Georgia. That militarized training would include training from militarized forces like the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force. We know about the Israelis. We know about the violence in Palestine that is inflicted upon innocent people as they simply pray. We have seen the murders of women and children just for praying in Palestine by the Israelis. And these are the same people who are training police forces here. So when we think about what this is doing, think about Israel, think about the UN, think about those other NGOs that were mentioned by Karanja and the explicit PR that they do without doing any tangible good. We see military bases all over this world by the US. The inception of AFRICOM is something that should have never come about. There is no way that the US should have an inkling about what is good for Africa because it is honestly not our business. We truly need to take care of things at home. And it's not like the U.S. can't be more humanitarian because we show plenty of humanitarian efforts to the Ukraine, but we won't show it to Eritrea. We won't make sure that people in that region can stop starving because of war, but we will allocate $24 billion to Ukraine without batting an eyelash. We will make sure that African people have the hardest time immigrating to this country, but we'll make sure that Ukrainians can come under asylum with no problem. Why? Because Ukrainians are white and Africans mostly that come here are black. At the end of the day, it is the same racialized capitalism, colonialism, and imperialism that has dominated this U.S. attitude of superiority. We see it in Niger, we see it in Haiti, we see it here with the inception of Cop City. And the only thing that I know that we can do is to begin and continue the efforts that we've already done. But we have to truly stop believing in their so-called systems and create our own so that we can truly be free. Uhuru family, free the land and thank you for having me today. Thank you so much, Reverend Kiana Jones. That was uh, just perfect. She made so many, of course, it would be a minister, right, who would know how to, in 10 minutes, uh, tie together all of these issues. Um, we are uh, going to have a slight change. Uh, we have a, one of our speakers is having some issues connecting, so we're changing our order um, a bit. So our next speaker is going to be David Oxygen. He is a militant socialist from Fort National, Portal Prince Haiti. He's the General Secretary of Molagoff, the Movement for Liberty and Equality of Haitians for Fraternity. David Oxygen, thank you. Merci beaucoup eh, pour me participer na aucun chaîne eh, chose à cap garder eh, situation eh, pays d'Haïti et garder l'autre pays qui est une situation difficile en bas griffe et peut-être ça. 
Et nous avons un thème qui est vraiment important, qui s'est fait la guerre contre le peuple africain, sorti dans le Niger pour arriver à Haïti et pour tomber directement dans le Cop City. D'abord, ça nous doit garder, il faut nous garder le rapport historique entre le pays Europe occidentale et le pays Niger, d'abord. Sous quel que soit le facteur, nous sommes capables de considérer. Et par exemple, le facteur économique, stratégique et politique. Et si nous considérons le facteur ça, nous avons donc relation et gros pays et héros occidentaux, Yoshita, sous le rapport, et nous capables de relayer le rapport domination, rapport colonisation, rapport recolonisation, rapport exploitation et pillage. Et si nous considérons directement et Niger, et un pays qui a boumé dans le moment, qui l'ancien a et désistance par quel que soit la taille de la vie. Et le pays Niger, donc, c'est un pays qui paraît qui pauvre dans le monde. Et le Niger paraît comme un pays pauvre dans le monde. Mais c'est un pays côté que la France. Et comme pays Europe et colonisateur, voulait donc rester en relation avec Niger. Et voulait rester attaché à Niger par rapport avec ça que Niger représenté. Et si nous prenons par exemple, et comme septième producteur mondial de la question iranienne, ça, c'est un premier facteur qui fait donc les pays occidentaux, notamment la France, les attachés avec les pays Niger comme ça. Et la grande puissance européenne, elle utilise tout moyen pour exploiter, pour approvisionner, pour prendre, pour capter l'uranium et qui n'a pays Niger et histoire révélée, toute statistique économique révélée et l'uranium qui a sorti dans le pays Niger, côté que pays occidental yo a a joui, il en haut de plus passé et 20.2%. Donc e, Niger c'est un pays qui e, a un niveau d'extrême de, pauvreté. Et ni extrême pauvreté, ni ni en hauteur, près de 40,8% d'après la statistique qui était dans l'année 2021. Et pauvreté, ça a touché plus de 10 millions de monde dans le pays Niger. Mais ça n'a pas fait, en quelque sorte, et le pays impérial, surtout la France, et pas attaché à partir des questions, donc, il n'y a pas de monde. Niger comme pays qui pauvre, mais Niger pays pauvre, mais Niger a enrichi la France. Donc, et, pays occidental, pays occidental, l'organisation qui lie avec pays occidental, tant que Union européenne, et il y a toujours une seule politique avec l'Afrique. Il y a toujours une seule politique avec l'Afrique. Et celle politique, ça, on a la foule là, les chita sous deux points. Deux points, c'est exploitation ressources naturelles de l'Afrique. Et deuxième point, c'est stigmatiser l'Afrique. Stigmatiser l'Afrique, non, mettez l'Afrique dans un camp loin. Et à ce de stigmatisation, ça, L'Afrique vient comprendre. Je vais l'Occident a fait. Et je vais
we're, we're trying to, hi everybody. We know that the uh, our speaker was louder than the interpreter. So we're pausing this for uh, a moment. Uh, interpreter, can you, uh, hold on, hold on everybody just a moment. We're trying to fix this. Hello. Uh, interpreter, can you tell David to speak a little lower? We're going to try to do this a little simply. If he can just uh, lower his volume a little. We, of course, you need to hear him, but we need to hear you. Can you tell David that? All right. So Ken, he can start again. Let's let's see how this works. He can start again. Okay. Autant de clé. Okay. Tell them now, Mal. It's still loud. Oui, we tell you, mais on pense que toujours au déjà, au déjà fort, au déjà déçu pour lui. Okay. Et là. Okay. We commence à zéro. Et j'en ai dit, il y a une façon qui paraît très claire. Il y a une stigmatisation et contre l'Afrique. Et la stigmatisation et permet à ce que l'Afrique vienne comprendre d'une façon très claire. Et l'Afrique vienne comprendre, donc, il y a un complot contre lui-même. Et qui ont une bataille, qui ont conflit contre l'Afrique. Et les ça, l'Afrique a lancé un combat. L'Afrique a lancé un combat. Et qui s'est commencé déjà. Le combat s'est commencé déjà à Burkina Faso. Le combat s'est commencé déjà depuis des ans, des années, avec son, Thomas Sankara, avec... Patrice Mumba. Et bataille ça, il paraît plus clair jeune aujourd'hui. Et un véritable combat anti-colonisation, anti-recolonisation, anti-raciste et anti-impérialiste. Et coup d'État, coup d'État dans le pays Niger, le sujet est passé. Il remettait en question relation relation avec la France, pays colonisateur. Ça, c'est un véritable combat qui commence à jouer aujourd'hui et dans la, la, la réalité, dans la jonction, avec le général Abdouham, et fait contre et, 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 et ancien président qui a bobo, qui a marché côte à côte avec et la France, pays colonisateur, qui c'est Mohamed Bazou. Et le peuple PNG, je ne dis pas, il a manifesté, il a levé campé, et il a solidarisé, il a même avec le général là. Et le général là, pour pouvoir, et nous, le peuple là, lui-même, il a attaqué l'ambassade, attaqué l'ambassade de la France. Le chiré de drapeau français et yon mette de drapeau la Russie. Et yon dit vive Poutine et dans tout pays. Et ça nous pas oublié dans la région, on a déjà gagné. Et on pas qu'être pays qui a joué la Russie, comme le Mali et Burkina Faso. Qui donc 
face à l'essence nigérien, dans le combat anti-colonisation, anti-recolonisation et anti-impérialisme, ils arrivent à camper, ils arrivent à bloquer la guerre impérialiste là, à faire dans le pays. Il y a une guerre qui prend toute forme. Et, and you should, excuse me, I'm so sorry, you should be, David, David, you should be wrapping up now. Thank you. Let him know he should be finishing. Et rapidement, donc, pour nous terminer, ça passe dans le pays Niger, et puis il y a lui-même, Li, li fait bec à terre, échoué. Yo, Evin, occupé Haïti, pas que pa trois mois. Et sorti l'occupation en 1915, sorti l'occupation en 1915, sorti l'occupation en 2004, et puis il y a les sagons rennes contre Haïti. Le Haïti, il est occupé Haïti, et pas tous les mois et qui fait jour et jour, gain gros possibilité pour venir faire force intervention dans le pays. Donc, guerre impérialiste, c'est occupation, intervention militaire, mais résistance populaire, c'est non. Avec force de occupation, toute quelle que soit forme, forme de militarisation dans le pays, et qui a fait nous perdre, ça nous relève. La souveraineté populaire. Donc, Haïti, un pays grand monde de pays, je ne veux pas un pays qui occupé à tous les niveaux. Même comme Haïtiens, comme militants, nous demandons solidarité avec tout peuple. Même j'en ai fait là, je vais utiliser la voix Haïti pour me remercier nous et pour me dire nous. Donc, solidarité est vraiment important pour nous. Si tout par rapport avec le moment Haïti, la traversée est un moment qui est difficile, il y a des gangs et des réalités, il y a des pouvoirs réactionnaires, il y a des groupes qui sont criminels qui ont occupé le pays, et je ne dis il y a des militaires qui ont occupé le pays, pays ya, pour organiser les gens qui ont mis ça. Merci beaucoup. Solidarité nous est vraiment importante pour les pays Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Uh, our, our last speaker is in Zimbabwe. Uh, Comrade Mafa Kwanise Mafa is a Zimbabwean Pan-Africanist activist and organizer. He's national chairman of the Zimbabwe Movement of Pan-African Socialists, national chairperson of the Zimbabwe Palestine Solidarity Council, provincial chairperson of the Zimbabwe-Cuba Friendship Association. He's also patron uh, uh, for the Zimbabwe Congress of Student Unions at the Midland State University, where he's a senior assistant librarian and a member of ZANU-PF, Zimbabwe African National Union Patriotic Front. Uh, although it, uh, he's having a connection issue, so it may be Tipe Larada Dube, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, please join us. Yes, I see Tipe is there. And if you could pronounce your name correctly, I'm sorry, I'm sure I messed it up. Uh, please go ahead, Tipe. Thank you. Okay, hello, comrades. I hope you're well. I'm sorry, I'm all having connectivity issues as well. So my I'm unable to um stream my video. But uh, my name is Tipe uh, Lorata Dube. I'm the Secretary of Information Publicity at the Zimbabwe Movement. I also hold the same post within the Zimbabwe Palestine Solidarity Council and the Cuba Friendship. I recommend, I think most of the, from what I've listened to, uh, from that the speaker is pretty much out of my mouth. I to add a little bit to the top, I would like to say that, as maybe in conclusion, that 
one of the the main thing at the end of the day is that as Africans we must unite, and the only way Africa can Africa can be empowered. I'm so sorry. They both had um, um, connections issue, and it looks like we lost Tipe. Um, so we're very sorry about that. They were both uh, trying to join us. So it's unfortunate. If she comes back on, uh, we will um, we will have her back on. So we, in our time, uh, we got to be flexible, right? Uh, we will go to our Q and A and our panelists, if you can turn your cameras on now. Okay, so uh, we have, we do have some questions. I don't know if we, how many we will have time on. Um, and um, let's see. So I will take a look at this. Um, let's see. Uh, so I will start here, but uh, with a question for uh, Karanja. And excuse me, and anybody can uh, add something to this, but I think he's the best person to answer. Um, about Kenyan police in Haiti. Aren't there a thousand Kenyan police in Haiti already? Is that correct? I do not believe that they're, they're not there yet because the UN resolution has not yet been passed. What there was, was they sent a, a few, uh, it might have been a contingent of 10 police and uh, government officials to do a so-called uh, assessment and, and to meet Haitian authorities. But for the thousand uh, actual police to be sent requires a UN resolution. I am confident, well, not so confident, but I'm hoping that it will not pass. Uh, and I'm counting on countries such as China and Russia to veto that because it is not in the interest of Kenya. It is not in the interest of the Haitian people, as far as I know, if the Haitian people are not asking for it, I do not see what value or, or use uh, it would be other than creating more division um, and divide and conquer. I appreciate the awareness of the Haitian people because they seem to be very clear that it's not the Kenyan people that are, are their enemy in this. They, they are very clear. The Haitian people have, have been on this rodeo, and so they're aware that this is an imperialist project, um, but uh, regardless, uh, it should not happen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I have a, a question for Fatou. You touched on this in your remark, in your remarks, uh, about the historical significance of the security alliance between Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. Um, uh, and their, um, yes, the security, I'm sorry, the significance of their alliance. Can you uh, please speak to that briefly? Thank you. Fatou, you're muted. Désolé. Bon, comme je le disais tantôt, um, le Sénégal est Excusez-moi, le Niger, le Burkina et le Mali ont signé, euh, euh, comment on appelle ça, une alliance militaire et économique. Voilà, c'est cette alliance, il y, a, il y a des chartes, il y a une charte euh, pour cette alliance et ça stipule que, par exemple, toute attaque euh, contre la souveraineté d'un de, de, de ces trois pays-là est considérée comme une attaque directe à, à tous ces pays, en fait d'une certaine façon. Donc, c'est un peu ces genres de, ces, ces, ces genre de, de trucs qui constituent l'alliance entre les, 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 trois pays, les trois pays. Et en plus, cette alliance a été créée pour, en fait, coordonner, en fait, les, 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 les trucs de, je dirais, les, coordonner les, 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 les attaques, coordonner les... les 
le travail qui se fait sur le terrain contre le terrorisme, parce que comme on le, on le, on le sait, euh, ces trois pays sont frontaliers et euh, le terrorisme touche, les, tout, euh, touche euh, les, ces trois pays frontières, en fait. Donc, euh, ça, sera une, une, euh, ça sera vraiment un, 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 un pas, c'est un, de, de, un pas de géant dans, dans cette lutte, euh, parce que ça va permettre d'un côté de... de ça va les permettre de coordonner, par exemple, euh, leur, leur défense, leurs attaques et tout ça, leur opération sur le terrain. Mais en même temps, c'est une avance euh, politique, euh, vraiment euh, une avance importante pour euh, la, le panafricanisme en général, parce que bon, il faut, il va falloir, il faut bien commencer à quelque part. Voilà, il faut bien commencer à quelque part. Et je pense que si euh, on prend, euh, si déjà ces trois pays ont eu euh, l'idée de, de fusionner et, et militairement, je pense que euh, c'est un grand pas euh, dans, dans, dans le panafricanisme, dans l'option, l'optique de d'unir, de, d'unifier euh, les, les États africains. Et je pense que c'est un truc à saluer euh, dans l'ensemble. Je ne sais pas si j'ai été, j'ai pu répondre à la question ou s'il y a des zones d'ombre. Thank you, thank you so much. And um, uh, I have a, a question for uh, 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 Reverend Jones. I'm, I'm using my prerogative as a as the moderator. Um, what are the international, I know you you touched on this, but do you have more to say about the international connections and how Uh, people here can be aware of the dangers of Atlanta's cop city. And of course, there are cities in uh, the rest of the country who are trying the same thing. How is that connected internationally? How do we make sure people see those connections? We cannot escape what the U.S. has done abroad. We can't look at militarization of police in the U.S and not think about the fact that the United States has military bases all over the world. We cannot escape the fact that the US has constantly gone into other countries to train civilian police in military tactics against their own people. And when we see what the US has done, particularly with AFRICOM, We can't think that Cop City here would be any different, just like imperialism has spread throughout the world with the U.S. taking our military into foreign lands and training civilian police to terrorize their own citizens. They're doing the same thing here with Cop City. And the way that it's beginning to spread, we have a proposal now in Baltimore for a Cop City. There is a proposal now in Tennessee for a cop city. There was one in Seattle. There is one in New York, Chicago. Hawaii was able to defeat their proposal. But I think it would be incredibly foolish of people in the US not to look to what the US has done abroad. Because remember, we take these uh, militarized forces and go into other countries to essentially silence the people. The same thing is happening with us here with Cop City, the, the level of state repression is now unprecedented. So now we have become, the US has become a militarized regime that makes it criminal to disagree with the government. They have criminalized dissent and the movement to stop Cop City is a glaring example of that wherein people have been charged with domestic terrorism for simply handing out flyers. People have been charged on a RICO indictment for getting reimbursement for a meal. But when you look at the indictment against the protesters against Cop City, you see things like the words solidarity and mutual aid being called nefarious. You see things like anarchism and anti-government sentiment being called criminal. So you cannot think about what's happening here in Cop City without tying it to the way the US military has shown itself all around the world with this notion of taking local police departments and militarizing them against their own people. Uh, thank you. And I see, thank you so much, Reverend Jones. I see Tipe is back. I saw her back. <laughs> Tipe, are you there? Oh dear, I think. Uh, okay, if I if I see her, 
Yes, are you are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, but the sound is still not good. And um, I'm so sorry. I it does still does not sound good. Try to speak to us again. Let's see if if we can get you in. Hello, Tipe. No, we don't. Um, it's not going to work. I'm so sorry. We really wanted uh, you or our comrade Mafa to speak, but it looks like the connection problem isn't going to work. And I'm I'm very sorry about that. Um, I thank you so much. But we're we're going to uh, we're going to go on um, uh, with uh, our next question. Um, I wanted to ask um, uh, David Oxygen. I hope uh, everything's okay with your your channel now. Uh, what is it that you that in Haiti would like uh, from people uh, Tom? Is there is an impending uh, another impending occupation of Haiti? Can you briefly tell us what that would be? Bon, Haïti est trouvé dans une situation qui est vraiment difficile. C'est une situation qui résume une situation de racisme, une situation de guerre, une situation de complot, de conspiration contre Haïti. Situation qui marque une situation de guerre. Guerre impérialiste, une situation de crise, crise impérialiste, une situation qui fit à sous pillage, qui fit à sous vol, crime, massacre, c'est ça. Guerre ou malheur pendier sous terre Haïti. Et malheur pendier ça y est, c'est gros pays impérialiste qui fabrique dans la boîte, dans la boîte Et je nous souvent dit, gros pays impérialistes sont utilisés des satellites dans le pays pour être capable de créer toutes les institutions qui font que je ne veux dire que c'est une institution pour pourrir les théories, pour être capable de mettre les gens dans le massacre, utiliser toutes les méthodes, utiliser toutes les stratégies pour faire la mourir en vous. Et pour la classe dominante, les politiciens traditionnels, les impérialistes américains, qui contrôlent le pays. Il y a une façon pour faire ça. Il a utilisé Google Gang. Il a utilisé Mercenet. Il a utilisé Bandit. Il a massacré Pepla. Et par la suite, il a le fait. Il va demander le mandat pour des forces d'intervention dans le pays. Donc, donc face, face à cette situation, le mandat pour être là et lever le camp, c'est la résistance populaire. Depuis qu'il y a une guerre impérialiste, depuis qu'il y a une attaque impérialiste, c'est la résistance populaire. Même si on a fait ça déjà, et on a pris le temps, on a pris le période, côté de la là, c'est quand même mobilisé. Intervention, intervention militaire, contre occupation, contre massacre, crime. Et qui ont mal à l'aise de ce pays, c'est ce solidarité internationale pour nous dénoncer ça. C'est une unité de lutte entre les organisations de nos pays pour nous capables de sortir de ça. Donc c'est un combat. À chaque fois qu'il y a une guerre impérialiste, il y a une résistance populaire dans tout le pays. Et ces résistances populaires, même si ça a été fait, En, en, en 1915, même si ça a été fait en 1750 avec le monde, même si ça a été fait en 1803, même si ça a été fait en 1990, même si ça a été fait en période 2004 pour faire résistance au ministère, et c'est comme ça qu'on peut faire résistance contre l'occupation du pays. Et pour nous dénoncer pour le projet, projet criminel, projet de mort, et puis il y a des contre le pays. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you so much, David. Thank you. I wanted to get to some, uh, I love what you were saying, but I wanted to get to some more folks. Can people hear me? I just saw in the chat that I was choppy. Can people hear me now? Um, yes, give me a thumbs up. Yes, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, we have a question uh, from a student, first year student at Spelman College in Atlanta. Uh, Reverend Jones, uh, uh, the student asks, how can I contribute to this movement as a student? Our students are paramount in our struggle against Cop City. And it's really important for us to be able to have them. We are fortunate that we have students who are so energized and activated. Okay. We can definitely put you in touch with our student organizers. If you're at Spelman, then you are right near Morehouse. So that means that you can connect with our organizers on the campus of Morehouse. I'm sorry, someone, I'm sorry, hold on. Somebody else is speaking. Cool. Everyone should be muted. Everyone should be muted. Okay, cool. Go ahead, Reverend Jones. Go ahead. There are also some other students at Spelman who have been attending rallies and different actions. And if you attend any one of those rallies or actions, definitely connect with those student organizers or I will put my email address into the chat. You can connect directly with me, have people connect directly with me, and I will put you in touch with those student organizers. But there is definitely room for students in this movement. We would not be moving without our students. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I have a question for um, our, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, for uh, Batu and uh, Karanja, uh, because they're on, um, uh, on the African continent or uh, working um, uh, on uh, writing about Africa. And that is uh, the relationship of African nations to Russia and China that's coming up in some of our questions. Uh, why um, has this uh, uh, um, uh, urge to uh, be aligned with those countries? Why is that coming up at, uh, the, at this time? And do you think that's beneficial? If you could answer briefly, Fatu first and then Karanja. D'accord. Um, il faut reconnaître que les, la, la population, les Africains se sont, disons, réveillés, si on peut le dire. Uh, ils, ont cette, ils ont compris qu'en fait, le monde est actuellement uh, divisé en blocs. Uh, le bloc uh, uh, des capitalistes, de, de, de l'impérialisme et le bloc uh, de l'autre côté qui tend vers le socialisme uh, démocratique. Du coup, um, ils ont vu qu'ils ont été... De, ils ont été exploités pendant longtemps par l'autre côté du, du capitalisme, de l'impérialisme. Et là, en fait, il y a, il y a, il y a comme ils sont en face, ils sont dans une situation où, en fait, ils ont besoin de s'entourer de, de partenaires sur comme on le dit, de partenaires, contrairement aux, aux autres qui, qui sont des colonisateurs, des imp, euh, euh, comme, euh, oppresseurs. Là, on a besoin des partenaires, des partenariats sains. Et ces, ces pays, la Chine, la Russie et, 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 et les autres, la Corée, en fait, nous proposent nous propos ces, ces, ces partenariats. En fait, on, on, la, les, les, on voit en eux, en fait, ce partenariat sain. Voilà, cette, cette aide, ce soutien, je, je veux dire, euh, cette alliance voilà, qui va vraiment euh, nous, nous être utile parce qu'il faut le reconnaître, euh, on est dans un monde de, 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 de blocs, voilà, donc, euh, et ça va vraiment nous permettre de, de, de nous sortir de cette situation, parce qu'on voit qu'à chaque, chaque fois, chaque, qu'à chaque pays essaie de, de, de sortir, de se, de, de se libérer, il y a toujours des sanctions internationales qui, qui se posent contre ce pays et tout, et cette alliance, en réalité, ça va nous permettre, en, en tant que bloc, de, de, de survivre à ces, à, ces, à ces sanctions et de pouvoir, euh, comment on appelle ça, prendre notre envol et gérer les choses à notre manière et avec euh, notre souveraineté. Um, and uh, yeah, so just to comment on that, um, you know, there's much more being made of the Russian and, and Chinese alliance with uh, people in the Sahel. What we see is that the Alliance of Sahel States is an alliance between Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, 
there's no Russia in there, there's no China in there. So um, it, it is inescapable that, of course, we Africans, uh, and in particular the revolutionary uh, states uh, of the uh, uh, alliance of Sahelian states, are aware and don't necessarily need or want to be isolationist. Uh, and so they do have to make partnerships with uh, that work that are of uh, benefit uh, of, of mutual benefit. Who is offering or who can provide partnership that is mutually beneficial? We do know that it's not going to be imperialist. It's not going to be Africom. It's not going to be the United States. It's not going to be France. It's not going to be the European Union. Um, Russian interests are very much aligned. Uh, I, I Let me put it this way. Uh, the African interests can be far more aligned with Russian interests because what we do know is that Russia is looking for partners as well. What Russia is looking for is partners that are strong, that can uh, contribute to a multipolar, multilateral world. What we see coming from the United States is a vulturistic, uh, exploitative, extractive relationship that is not of any benefit to anyone except the United States. What we see in Ukraine, for example, is that the United States doesn't even care about their cousins in Europe. They will exploit, kill, uh, plunder anybody, including their fellow European cousins. So it, what do you think they will do to people who look like us, given what we know that they do to people who look like us within the United States who are American citizens? Do we, can we even begin to expect that for those of us that are slightly farther away, uh, in Africa, that they would uh, that they that they would come in and and act any different. So Russia is interested in partners that have power, that can be independent, that have economic uh, muscle to be partners in a in a multipolar world. We are also we see that the Chinese are also looking for partners that are capable that 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 will produce that will provide for them the markets that they are looking. Uh, for, as well as that provide avenues for Chinese um, manufacturing. So in building roads, in building whatever it is that the Chinese are building. So the, the partnership with the Chinese is far more aligned because China doesn't, the, the West, the, the only thing that the West has to export other than war is, um, you know, their, their, their only export is finance. And by its very nature, what they do with finance is exploit in a vulturistic um, uh, way. Whereas the Chinese, what they are exporting is work, is manufacturing. And so we can be aligned with that. Now, I would caution us and I would caution the whole world and writers and, and media and, and, and journalists out there that um, we are not, we Africans are not we, we, to, they, they need to make far less of, of it. Uh, Africans are capable of making alliances with people that suit us. So it, it, it's not a, a situation where Russia is coming in, no. It's a situation where we are seeking alliances. So, you know, this paternalistic view of Africa that we, we can only uh, be, you know, either sort of aligned with the West that is essentially uh, exploitative and, and, and paternalistic, or that we must only be aligned with China and Russia that is paternalistic. No, we need partners, we need partnerships that are mutually beneficial, and we have to step into all of those, eyes wide open, of course, and stand up for our interests. So it is in African interest to have partnerships with people that are Thank not exploitative <laughs> and culturistic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karanja. We have to end at 2.30 because we will turn into um, pumpkins if we don't end at 2.30. I want to thank all of our participants. I want to thank the interpreters who worked so hard. I want to thank the team who put all of this uh, together. And if someone could put in the chat the link to 
uh, the Shutdown AFRICOM webpage. There's so much you can do this month. This is just the beginning. The webinar are kicking off. Teachings, mass actions, uh, information, resources. And uh, so please go to that page and uh, uh, join us. Thank you. Uh, just got the link up there in um, our work to shut down AFRICOM. No compromise, no retreat. Thank you all. Yeah.